Hey Elementor fans, in this video I'm going to walk you guys through how to create this app-like navigation bar that you see down here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, this is mimicking an iPhone or a mobile device and we're going to create this app-like navigation menu. You can have this on your website without any kind of native app. You can just use it on the mobile version of your website. It's completely responsive. We'll show it only on mobile devices. We won't show it on desktop and we'll use the new Flexbox containers that are in Elementor 2.6. They are still in alpha beta phase, but pretty soon they'll be released um, live to every for everyone to use. They'll be out of the experimental phase. So we'll take a look at how to use those as well in this video. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come to templates and theme builder. This is where we can create our global headers, footers, and other different uh, global parts to our site. So we would come here to footer and we would click the blue plus icon to add a new footer. I'm gonna just go ahead and open up the one I've already created and walk you through that. But for you guys, if you're creating a footer for the first time, you'll go ahead and click this blue plus icon and that will get you started in creating a new footer template. Now, if you already have a footer that you're displaying globally and you're using Elementor's um, theme builder to display a global footer across the rest of your site, desktop, tablet, mobile, whatever, um, you can add this section in, in addition to what you've already got. So you would actually go to edit the current footer that you already have, and then you could still follow along and follow the steps that I'm gonna show you. You would just add this as an additional piece to your existing footer. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna open up this footer that I've got here. All right, so here we are in the Elementor editor, and you'll see this is what it looks like right now, and, and these are actually stacked, which is uh, maybe just something that Elementor are still working out with their Flexbox containers. Um, but I'm gonna leave this one here. This is already built and, and finished for us, but let's um, just show the process, the beginning of how to recreate it. So let's say you already have uh, part of a footer here, um, or even if you don't, you're still gonna come down and click the plus icon here, and you get to select your structure. So these structures may look different. This is because we've got the new experiment for the Flexbox containers enabled. If you don't, then you'll see the older version of what these, these default layouts look like. Um, more of just a simple column structure because they're not using the new Flexbox containers. So let me actually pause real quick and just show you how to enable the Flexbox containers if you don't already have them enabled. So in order to enable the Flexbox containers with Elementor, the first thing that we need is we have to have Elementor version 2.6 or higher. That's when they introduced the Flexbox containers. So make sure that you up, update Elementor to at least have version 2.6 or higher. Then we're gonna come into Elementor and settings and we come over to the Experiments tab, and a few options down, you'll see Flexbox Container. If this is set to default or inactive, it'll be inactive, but go ahead and just choose Active, and then come down and click Save Changes, and once you do that, you will now have uh, the green icon right here that shows you it is active. So you'll need to do that first, then you would jump over into your editor and go to edit your footer or create a new footer if you don't have one yet. So let's jump back over to the footer and I'll show you how to do this. All right, so here we are in our Elementor editor again with our footer. And the example I'm showing here has four different icons and four different navigation items. I think four is a pretty good number. Um, you might be able to get away with five, but I probably would not go any higher than five. It sort of just depends on what you've got on your site and what you're trying to promote down there in that bottom bar. Um, so let's just assume we're gonna stick with the four. Uh, we can just click this and it's got four equal columns for us, which is awesome. Um, or I should say four, I guess you can call them subcontainers um, within your main container here. So what we're gonna do is the first thing that I'll do is I'm gonna select the main container and under items down here, I am going to, so you'll see by default, it's gonna put them in a row, which is what we want. That's the direction. And then down here for wrap, this is uh, pretty important because by default, they are going to wrap. So we don't want them to. Um, wrapping means they might get bumped onto another line. And especially for mobile devices, they end up getting stacked. So we wanna say no wrap. So that will keep everything in just one row and not let anything get bumped down underneath. So that's an important setting right there. The other thing I'm gonna do here on the layout tab is I'm gonna come back to container so this is for the main container, and I'm gonna change the HTML tag to actually use the nav tag. That just means that this is navigation, which technically it is, 
Um, Elementor doesn't know what we're getting ready to do here, so by default it's just gonna uh, use a div by default, but we wanna tell it to use a nav element because that is what we're adding down here is four different navigation pieces. So let's change that HTML tag to a nav. Then we'll come up here to advanced and down to motion effects. And what we wanna do here is we wanna say sticky to the bottom. So that will keep it stuck to the very bottom of the viewport. And we only want that to happen on mobile. So we're gonna X out desktop and tablet so that it's just gonna be sticky on mobile. And we don't need any kind of offsets because we want it to actually stick to the very bottom. If you put an offset here, it would bump it up from the bottom, but we don't want that. We want it completely on the bottom. So we've got that option there, just, just stay at it zero. Then the other thing we need to do is come to the responsive option and hide it on desktop and on mobile. So, or on tablet, excuse me. So we're only gonna show it on mobile. Uh, so we've got that done. Now let's come up to style and let's give it a background color. So we'll just keep this simple and we'll just do a white background color. You can get fancy, you can do a gradient, you could do, um, you know, videos and slideshows, I'd be careful with that kind of stuff, but mainly just gradients, colors, uh, try to keep this pretty simple. You don't wanna to get too flashy with that bottom bar. So we're just gonna use a white background. And then I'll come down here to border, and we'll add a solid border, and we'll just do one pixel on the very top. And color-wise, let's just do a dark gray. So now we've got a one pixel border on the very top, so that will add a just one pixel line here, and we've got a white uh, background for that. So I'm just gonna update this for now, save our changes. The only other thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna come to advanced and I'm gonna add um, just a little bit of padding um, on the top and the bottom here. So let's uncheck that for padding and let's just add a little bit of padding on the top and a little bit on the bottom. I'm doing a little bit less on the bottom because there's naturally a little bit of padding um, below each one of these elements. So um, you can play around with that. Once we've added it and we look at it on our live site, we'll see and we can adjust these numbers if we need to, but we're gonna need a little bit of padding probably. So let's go ahead and add that in there. All right, so now that we've done that, we've set up the main container. Now we can actually add our each of one of our items here. So what I've used for each of these is the icon box. So I'm gonna click and drag that icon box into that first spot. And the first thing we can do here is choose our icon. So I want house, home, home looks good. There we go. So I choose home. Uh, you can choose whatever icons you want to correspond to whatever navigation items you've got down here and whatever pages you're linking to. So we've got home and then I'm going to, um, one cool thing you can do, I just left it as a default, but you can do stacked, which gives it a circular background, or you can do framed, um, and you can even change it to square or circle. So you can do that kind of thing if you'd like to. I like to just keep them as plain icons, so I kept that to the default. Um, the heading, this is obviously gonna be the name of your navigation item, so that will differ based on your specific site. And then this description here, we just wanna delete that entirely because we don't want any description. We just want the icon and then the title. That's all we want. And then for the link, you'll go ahead and put your link in here. Um, I'm just gonna put a pound sign, but you would actually put the URL to whatever you're using. And if you do wanna to link to your site's homepage, you can click this dynamics tag and just click site URL, and that will always go right back to the homepage. For anything else that you wanna put in here, you can actually just start typing the name of the page and Elementor will find a list of all your pages and you can choose it from a list that way as well. So you would put your link in there. The um, icon position we're gonna leave at the default, it's gonna show it above, and then our title HTML tag. I'm gonna use spans. Um, I don't think it makes sense to use a H3 tag down here in a navigation at the bottom of the page, so I'm just gonna use a span tag instead. That will also put the default text uh, much closer to what we want it instead of using um, header text, which is gonna be a little bit larger by default. So we'll go ahead and change that to span. Now let's hop over and style this up a little bit. So you'll see here, this is for the icon. We can go ahead and choose the primary color. 
um, and we've got a normal option and a hover option. Now, since we're only using this on mobile, um, I will set the hover option, but just know that it really only takes effect once you start pressing down with your finger on that on mobile. So it's not really as important as it is on desktop when you can hover a mouse over something. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and set it anyway, just because I do think some people still will see that, but it doesn't have the same effect, just know that as uh, it does on desktop. So for the primary color, we'll just make that black. And then as we hover for the primary, I'll just do pink so that it shows up as pink. And again, you won't be able to hover it on mobile, but once you start to tap it, you'll be able to see that pink there. Spacing, um, the first thing I actually tried when I was building this was zero, but to me, especially since we're doing this on a mobile device, which already has limited screen real estate, um, I still thought that distance between the icon and the home label was a little too much. So I actually went down and you can't use the arrows to go below zero, but if you do type in negative three, it does actually work. So you can type in a negative value here and it does pinch that space up a little bit more, which is pretty nice. And then for size, I found that 25 works pretty well. You'll see that matches here what I've already created. So 25 is a pretty good, good size, but feel free to adjust that a little bit up or down from there. Um, just make sure it's you know, big enough that it's gonna be easily tappable but not too big that it takes up uh, too much space um, down there at the bottom. Because it is gonna be sticky on the screen, we don't wanna take up too much screen real estate. Then we'll come down here to content. And this is where we can change the color of the title itself if we want to. So I don't think we're gonna to need to really touch any of these other options. Um, alignment is center by default, vertical alignment top. We just kinda of wanna keep all those things um, the same. Spacing for title I think bumps space between the title and the description, but we don't have one, so that's not a big deal. So really the only thing is color. So if you wanted the color to be pink, you could do that. I'm gonna just keep everything black by default. Small little downside is that um, I don't believe there's a simple way here in Elementor to set a hover color for the text, only for the icon. So when you tap this um, as a user, when they tap this, only the icon will change colors and this uh, title link will not. Um, you could do some custom CSS to change that, but there is no simple way here in Elementor to do it with the icon box. And once we've got this first icon box, we're gonna save ourselves some time and we're just gonna right click here on the blue pencil icon and we're gonna copy this one and then we'll right click here and we'll say paste. And that will put another instance of it and we'll paste again in the third one, paste again in the fourth one. And then all you have to do is come in here and you'll change out your icon, you'll change out your title, and you'll change out your link, and that's all you need to do. All the other settings are copied over from that first one we did, so that'll save you a lot of time there. So that's basically um, just about everything there is to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy out now that I showed you how to create that. This is the final product. Like I said, I think Elementor's Flexbox containers in the preview here, even though we've turned it to not wrap these, and we've said, um, it was this option here on layout and items, this option here for no wrap. Um, it still is wrapping them and throwing them in a column instead of putting them all in a row. But as you'll see, once I just click update here, I'll jump over to the preview on the live site and you'll see that these are all actually in a row. So this option is working, just not here in the preview. So let's take a look at that live site. All right, so here we are on the live site. And this is just a sample about page. Um, I've got a global header here that's sticky on the top as well. But you'll see as we're scrolling up and we're scrolling down, you'll see that bottom app-like navigation bar right there. So as we click it, you'll see that it turns the icon turns pink. As we go to click it to go to a new page. So let's go ahead and navigate to the shop page. There it is. Let's navigate to the contact page. There it is. Now, the one thing I did forget to show you that I have enabled, you'll notice this is sliding in. If you watch it again, watch it slide in from the bottom. Totally optional to do, but uh, because a lot of people may not be expecting that on a website, the slide in just adds a little bit of, of animation to it so that it draws the user's eye to it and lets them know that it's down there. So let's take a look at how we did that. So we're gonna select the main container here and we're gonna come over to advanced and it's super simple option under motion effects. All we do is we look here for this entrance animation and you can choose whichever one you want. Now I've kind of gone through all of these and since this is showing up at the very bottom of the viewport, 
The only two that really make sense to me would be either slide in up, which is what I've currently got, which is just sliding it upwards, or you can also do a fade in up, which will slide it in as well, but it'll kind of start at a zero opacity and go to 100% opacity once it finishes. So that's another option there that you can use, and I'll just show you what that one looks like. Very similar, but you saw just a little bit of opacity down there. Um, totally optional, don't need to do that if you don't want to, um, but I just thought it added a nice little, uh, nice little effect. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, just adding a nice little app-like navigation to a general website. You can make things look similar to an app even if you don't have a mobile app because building a custom mobile app can be very expensive. So this is just one way to add some navigation in there that makes it look and feel a little bit more like an app using Elementor. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next video.